Hey everybody, in today's video, we're gonna talk about segments in Customer I.O. There's data-driven segments, manual segments, and we're gonna talk about when you should use each one of those. So segments in Customer I.O. are simply lists. They're groups of people that you're putting together to perform some sort of action, look at common characteristics, put them in a workflow. And uh, to get to your segments in Customer I.O. on the left-hand panel on the navigation side, it's about three-fourths of the way down. Um, and you click on segments and you come to this window. You're automatically given all of the lists or segments that you've already created, that you can get into. But we're gonna create a data-driven segment and a manual segment and talk about the differences between both of them. So uh, <clears throat> let's start with data-driven segments. Data-driven segments, at least for me as a marketer, represent 90% of all the segments that I build. And the reason is, is that I need to use the data within my database to identify groups of people with like attributes, right? So let's just go test a data-driven segment here. In Customer IO, you can add a description that tells, you know, what the purpose of the segment is about and even tag it. And we'll create a data-driven segment. All right, so now that we're in a data-driven segment, it allows you to add conditions. So simple conditions would be like, does their email address contain gmail.com? Let's say I'm just trying to identify all of my Gmail users. So I would use an attribute filter, and I would look at email, which is identifier, and I, would, I have all of these different options here of how I want to filter this criteria, right? So since it's email is a string, I'm going to go contains gmail.com. Uh, I can get more advanced with this logic, right? So let's say that I want to add another attribute, and I'm going to look at create a date. Since it's a timestamp, I'm going to look at a timestamp after a relative date of seven days ago. Okay, so what we're looking at is all our Gmail users that were created at least, or less than seven days ago, okay? You'll notice that it automatically puts an and filter logic uh, operator there. So both of these conditions have to be true in order for someone to enter this segment. If I were to switch this to at least one of them, now you're gonna get an or operator, meaning that either folks with a gmail.com address or users that were created within the last seven days would enter this segment. Uh, these uh, operators can get pretty advanced with groups too, right? Let's say that I want to create a group and we're going to actually create two groups here. And I'm going to drop these two that we entered here, okay? So I'm going to say that in this group, they have to have both, or I'm going to copy these two to make it really fast. And I'm going to switch this to as a rel is uh, before a relative date of 14 days ago. Okay. So what's this going to do? In this scenario, I've created a segment that's going to pull Gmail users that were created within the last seven days and Gmail users that were created more than 14 days ago. So there's this window of seven days between seven and 14 days ago where these users would not come in. Okay? So you can get really advanced with all of these uh, filters and attributes to really identify the core group of who you need to target. Um, this is the basis of personalization, right? Like building segments, group attributes, so you can deliver content that's more relevant to them. Once you're done, you can just save it. I don't know if these filters are going to match anybody within my database. Oh, turns out it does. You'll notice here that it gives you the segment ID. It tells you how many people are in that segment. You can view those people here, and it'll take you to their list. It'll also, you can view them here, which I won't, just to uh, make sure I protect people within my database. Uh, it also shows where this segment is now being used. So as you add it to newsletters, campaigns, it will tell you the usage here, which helps in operational management moving forward. All right, 
So that's the essence of a data-driven segment. You can also use these segments for ad audiences, but we're not going to spend too much time on that. All right. So let's go back to our segments now and start a manual segment. So we'll go a test manual segment. I do not use these very often. Like I said, probably like 10% of the time. But when you create an ad, a manual segment, you're automatically dropped into the segment view, right? And there's no people in here. But you have prompts on how to add people to this segment. You as the user have to determine when someone enters the segment and when someone exits the segment. That's done either by uh, a workflow within Customer.io or a campaign, um, by adding them with a CSV. You can sync your data warehouse um, or use the API also to add or remove people. Um, since these are a little more technical, we're just going to stick with uh, a CSV and workflow. So if I add by a CSV, you will be prompted to upload the file. You can identify people by their ID, their unique ID within Customer.io, which you've determined either through like their user ID with like software or product that you have. Or you can also do it by email. Um, and then when you upload the file, you'll map attributes. And there's a template there to make sure that you pull in the data that you need to. And you'll be prompted to uh, also indicate whether you want to uh, update users that are existing or leave their values and only focus on new additions. And then you'll upload it and those people will be dropped in. Uh, we're not going to go through that whole process because there's one other way you can add folks. So if I come to a campaign, and I'm just going to go on this kind of test one here. Let's say that I've built this flow. And once they reach a stage, I want to make sure that they've been added to this list. We would say like it's that they've um, completed the workflow, right? So it'll be the last step. There's a manual segment update step here. And you'll notice I can either add a person to a segment or remove them from a segment with this step. Okay. One thing to note about manual segments right now within Customer I Know is you cannot go to an individual person's record and add them one by one from the user interface. It has to be through a, uh, a campaign, a CSV, or one of these more technical routes. So, and these lists are static, meaning they don't change unless you determine that they change. And they're used, at least in my world, a little less frequently. It depends on you know, your use case and what you want to do. Um, but that's the difference between data-driven segments, manual segments, and I uh, hope this is helpful. Okay. Till the next time.